Friends! Hello! We're back! Oh, it's so good to be back. Oh, may there be peace in all of your hearts as we enter this day, as we believe in ourselves and we tune in and we're going to find another person today um, and see what their view is like, their worldview, how they see the world, their perception, um, how they mitigate the world's chaos. Um, it's going to be a beautiful podcast and I'm super excited and what better to sh people to share it with than you. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a great day. Um, beautiful Tuesday day. Um, it's a new moon, I think tomorrow at some point. So already starting to feel those vibes and, uh, yeah, what, what, uh, what a day to, you know, do a podcast and then put it out into the world. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to get started on some of the Patreon supporters that have come in recently. Um, we have a new supporter in River City Studios. Uh, they reached out to me because I've been playing and recording with them for a while now with Why Not, and um, they just came to me and said, hey, we'd love to support the podcast, and I'm like, great, that's awesome, and... Um, I just wanted to give them a shout out on air and say that um, they are an awesome, awesome studio. They have everything that you need, whether you're um, performing hip hop or recording um, like as a jam band or as a solo musician, whatever you need. They've been in the business for 40 years. They have all the top equipment. Um, and I love working with the people there. The people is what really draws me draws me there is the the relationships that I have there um and they'll work with you on whatever you need to get done so if you want to hit them up um for your recording needs they're in Grand Rapids Michigan um so yeah uh if you're out just a little bit outside Grand Rapids still I recommend going through them and then my friend uh Joseph Lamieu um, is a blacksmith that creates knives. Um, he does restoration work. He makes swords, um, any kind of metal work that you can think of. He's really good at being able to do those things. He's been in the business for 11 years. He knows what he's doing. And, um, I just recently got a knife, not from him. Otherwise I think I would be uh, hitting, hitting him up for a knife. Um, cause I know he would do a really good job. He can do like inscriptions on there and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you want to check that out, it's lamusmithing.com. Um, and how you spell lame is a little funky. So I'll put that in the description below. And then we have bedroom ceilings. Who's a band in Grand Rapids that decided to support the podcast um, they do, they do like folk rock. Um, they take, they're very in, in experimental with their music, Ben Steer and Dean, uh, Chittenden. Uh, they do, they've been doing work for about two and a half years, maybe three years now. Um, and they elicit the help of other musicians in the Grand Rapids area that, and all the musicians in Grand Rapids are amazing. This music community is so talented and bedroom ceilings is one of those bands that's really um been doing the work recently and getting more uh defined and uh their sound has vastly improved they have multiple eps and uh cds you can check them out at um bedroomceilings.bandcamp.com and uh yeah with that being said um, I'm really grateful for anybody that has been supporting this podcast so far. I'm really going into this blind. Uh, I did a little bit of research. I tried to get the, the right equipment and figure out how I can do this consistently. And it's just been a blessing. It's, it's so cool to be able to just, uh, you know, all the conversations that I've had with people in person where it 
like you wish it was recorded because of how good the conversation was. That's part of why I'm doing this podcast. And um, this human that I'm about to bring on, I've had a lot of really good conversations with and uh, memories with um, that perhaps now we'll be able to record it and put it on air and, and see like if something beautiful comes through, if something terrible comes through, that'll come through too. Whatever. We'll, <laughs> we're in this together. Uh, so without further ado, um, Brett Kane is coming on the podcast. Uh, Brett Kane uh, is venturing into uh, body work. Uh, he is doing massage. He uh, went to school for it. And um, he's working to develop a lot of different modalities of healing, um, doing, being a yoga instructor and, um, finding out ways to help people process trauma and help people get to a place where they're more, uh, more of a clear vessel for spirit to come through. Um, and so I'm just so grateful for his work and his life. And I want to welcome to the podcast, Brett Kane. Hey, Tony. How's it going? Oh, it's going well. Good, man. I just want to say uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. And I uh, actually have been listening to uh, a couple episodes even today and uh, yesterday. And I think you got a good thing going. I'm trying. It's like we just like for the first like half hour that we were trying to set this thing up, my settings uh, like I had my settings on a weird mode that didn't allow me to hear him and then he couldn't hear me. <laughs> um, so it's a, you know, it's a work in progress and you're gonna, you're gonna find those bumps in the road, but as far as, as long as you continue to push through and know that you're gonna suck at first and, uh, eventually, you know, you'll get a rhythm down. And I think we're starting to get to that point where we're working through the kinks and then, it's going to be smooth sailing from there. Yeah, I, I think that that's like a, a really good stance to have, just acknowledging that when you first start something, you're probably not going to be as good at it as you will be in, say, a couple months, you know? And it's through those, like, lessons that you end up, like, finding your way to you know, forge ahead. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that it was with me that we were able to kind of work through those technical things, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Once you get some like bigger scale guests, you know, I think, you know, you'd be able to just judo flip that issue. And, um, yeah, I, I'm glad I was able to hold space for that and, uh, try and help. I felt so helpless on the other end. <laughs> I want to help, but, um, you Mac users, I just, I don't know how you do it. Oh man. Yeah. The reason why I got a Mac is because of garage band. And when I yep. was recording yep. at my mom's house way back in the day, I, like that was the best way to be able to record my stuff. It was just so user friendly and I could add some yeah. reverb on there. And I was like, Oh cool. Got it. Now I got a, a song yeah. that I have recorded. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, what are you up to lately? Man, there's too much. <laughs> um, uh, the biggest thing on the forefront, I guess there's actually two. Um, so thanks for asking. Um, I just got licensed for massage therapy, like you said, in that lovely introduction. Um, so I actually have two places that I'm practicing out of, one of which I'm subbing in for a friend. She's getting a back surgery. So it was kind of weird because it's actually connected to the school that I went to. So there's kind of this weird serendipitous uh, happening there where I'm already like really familiar with the plaza and um, I get to work with someone else's clients and build my skills. So I don't want to advertise myself as something that I'm not. Um, you definitely hit the nail on the head with the things that I'm interested in and pursuing um, with trauma work. That actually is like what got me into massage therapy. But I'm not there yet. Um, so um, outside of that, I'm actually also starting a podcast as well. Um, I guess it is now the, the time of uh, everyone coming together and podcasting. So... Yeah, I, um, I'm actually really grateful to have this opportunity and to kind of, like, feel where I'm at. Develop my radio voice, if you will. Um, yeah, so we can go down either of those paths if you want, or if you had something else you wanted to bring up. I, how about, how about the up. radio show voice? <laughs> All right, so you are now tuning <laughs> in to Find the Others with Tony Guerin and Brett Kane. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Well, you got to have fun I, with it, you know? I mean, that's, yeah, that's part yeah. of, that's part of it because if you're not, if you're trying to be something like while you're a podcast host, then like, mm-hmm. it's just going to come off as on, on inauthentic yeah. and then people aren't going to want to listen to you. So yeah. like I, I try to take the approach of like when I first get on the podcast, like I, like I love Duncan Trussell and I love how yeah. weird he gets. The first yeah. thing you hear is something really, really, really strange and it yeah. gets you out of your comfort zone or it gets you like just laughing immediately, even if you've had a bad day. Yeah. And so that's really what I want to start doing with this podcast is start to like break the ice in a way that like you don't have to listen to a, a lot of the bullshit that you hear on social media or like whatever, like t- come to this podcast and just like chill out and like work out or like do whatever you do. Um, yeah. And hopefully it can be something that's like fruitful for you. Yeah. And something I noticed specifically with your podcast um, from the previous episodes and listening in on your intro today, um, it's you, you know? And I think that that's like a really beautiful thing is you're showing up authentically and like, I heard it and it, it wasn't like, oh, Tony's doing a carry. It's like, oh, Tony, you know, and like feeling that sense of like kinship, you know, I mean, because we have been friends for so long, but, you know, I think um, with already where you're at, your authentic voice is just like right then and there. And um, even if it might be shaky sometimes, I, I think that that's, it's, it's just a better way to start things off and to like, just be present with yourself and like give yourself the space to like, kind of like do the dance do the surf and sometimes you fall off the board and sometimes you get back on and um and i'm not saying you fell off the board by any means um Mm -hmm. i just think it's really good that um you know we are where we are and uh yeah i'm glad that you're not doing a character because you are a lovely human and you got a lot to offer just by being you you know yeah as i'm sure many of your listeners are i mean i listened just today um the one with you and nay and um they were you know just being them and i was just like i love this human like i know this human nice yeah yeah you know yeah yeah well i i think that's the main point too what i'm trying to do with the podcast is like it's just it's it's in the name it's like tune in to who you yeah. are yeah. and then find other yeah. people that are tuning into themselves so possibly we can learn from each other's tuning in like yeah and and see how like we can uh kind of like collaborate on ways that we function in the world Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's definitely important to first do the tuning into yourself you know yeah like i like to think of it and i've had this experience i mean the fact that we've even met um is kind of indicative of like you got to stabilize your frequency and it's only when it's stable that you're able to team viewers coming up but it's once it's stable that you're able to actually start resonating with other people who've stabilized theirs. Mm. When you're not able to show up in like a concrete way in yourself, then you're always just going to be putting all these mix match vibes out there. And yeah. it's, you're just in the sea of chaos, you know? Yeah. Well, all right. Um, why don't you start off by just letting people know like what your, what your goals are right now? Um, yeah. So, I guess it's been the same goal as it's always been <laughs> just to primarily explore what it means to be a human. Um, you know, we're living in a very interesting time with a lot of different uh, unique stressors that we have to face. And I think it requires a new kind of conversation that respects the wisdom of the ancestors and the technology of tomorrow and um, the friends of today, you know? So um, I kind of come from a background of always kind of being on the outside of most things Um and I never really like fully gotten into anything because I was always so interested in surfing everything. Um, so kind of what got me to where I'm at is um, actually sitting down and making like a, uh, like a word web. Cause I like, I just like, okay, I got to settle into something. I, I'm a Jack of all trades, master of none, but not really a Jack of much. <laughs> so I made a word web and it was just like, I just, wrote down all the different things that interested me so i was like massage yoga breath work nature sustainability community building and it was just this this huge thing and i decided from there like okay here are my interests i have 20 to 30 terms what how do i want to start drawing these lines and i found that the easiest lines to draw were the ones that were 
body work focused, uh, things that affected physiology, um, opened people up psychologically, spiritually. Um, and that's when I kind of like over time honed in that like, oh, I think body work is the foundation that I'd like to build the rest of my practices on. So my goal right now is um, to keep practicing um, and to build a unique practice that incorporates a lot of different modalities. Um, luckily, doors have just been like opening for me naturally. Like I don't have to exert myself and I feel like that's how I know mm -hmm. I'm kind of in the right groove. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm learning how the body works and how to produce longevity and vitality. Um, and first I want to like really secure it in my own sphere and like know it, you know, before I open all those other parts. I know massage well enough now, but you know, with the yoga and the breath work, I definitely need some more time fermenting that, but that's definitely the trajectory that I want to go. Yeah. That's so cool. How long did it take you to really come to that conclusion on body work? Oh, man. Um, it happened pretty quick as soon as the dominoes started to fall. For a long time, I was kind of bashing my head against this idea of being a musician. Um, I make electronic music as well, and I enjoy it, but there was always something about it that was kind of missing, and I just never knew, and I had this idea of myself, and I was holding myself to this standard that I don't even think I would have enjoyed had I met it. Um, so it was actually last year for my birthday. I was out at Red Rocks in Colorado um, seeing my favorite band, Papadocio, followed by the Polish Ambassador, which, it, like, the stars aligned for that show. Wow. It was just incredible. And it was, like, my birthday, and I had all my good chaps there, and it was also their birthdays. Like, there's, like, three of us that all had a birthday in the same two days. It was weird. Holy crap. Um, but... I was under the influence of um, some medicines. I'll leave it at that. And I just like had this big like crack in that identity of musician where I was like, wait, if I took all of this energy I'm putting into this narrative and I put it into all of my other interests, I could have something really dope. Mm. Um, so it was then and then a matter of like three, four months, I decided on massage therapy. And um, yeah, it happened pretty quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, considering, I I could just say from like from knowing you and being friends with you, we don't talk every day, but right. it seemed to happen so fast. Like, yeah, all of a sudden you were you just like showed up and you're like, well, I'm doing massage, and then <laughs> like, oh, I'm starting school now. Like, oh, I'm done with school now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I feel like that's indicative of like finding your path, you know. It's kind of the same thing with you in this podcast i heard about it and the next thing i'm like oh now i'm listening to it yeah and honestly watching you and your music grow was it was maybe one of the most inspirational things because i first heard you play um i was just meeting you it was at um oh shoot what was it called six crows is that the it could have been it? it could have been six crows but i i think i met you for the first time at branch out camp out yeah yeah, but I first really started to like share space with you at Six Crows, and yeah. you like busted out your guitar, and um, I mean you always had heart with it, you know. But I was, I was like, I could see where this is going to be growing, and like just in such a quick amount of time, because mm. I don't think you were playing that long at that point. Um, but like over the course of like a year, you were just like you're playing shows all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like I think as soon as you find your path it unfolds you don't have to exert any effort not to dismiss all your hours of practice but i'm sure there's a sense of it that was is easy for you no i think you're right you reach a point where you reach those ten thousand hours or whatever it is yeah and you just yeah. it's it's automatic you yeah. know yeah. you still have to tune into the moment you still have to tune into who, what your energy is you know exerting itself as or like just processing as um and that makes a difference in how you output that in like in the moment and in, in wherever whatever space you're uh existing in but yeah. still um when you've hit that stage a number of times to the point where it doesn't even phase you anymore um like it used to be I used to be so scared to be in front of crowds I used to be so nervous to play in front of people and 
there's times that I still feel that a little bit. Um, but it's nothing in comparison to like, I feel like now I could realistically go in front of a thousand people or 2000 people and I would be the same as I am right now. Wow. And that, I think that's, that's a part of what you're talking about is it's, it's, it, you, you, t- you do the work enough times to where it becomes almost automatic and yeah. you're, you're just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the element of questioning it is kind of gone. I feel like yeah. there's kind of like a doorway that you have to cross. Like if you're like standing outside, just kind of like, I don't know if I still really want to do this. Then like, you know, like once you get through that door, it, uh, completely changes, you know, and when, once it is no longer a question, then you're able to like allocate more of your energy and you're not investing energy in fighting yourself because you know and like it just is it's like it's as natural as like the flock of birds migrating you know it's Mm. they know how to stay they're not fighting you know it's just it's what's happening yeah you know but you got to get through that door you know yeah but i want i wanted to you know send you some appreciation for like that that reflection uh that you just you know gave to me because it's yeah it's honestly been um a lot of it's been a huge journey for me to figure out like how to consistently and organize like musical output and um that recognition makes me feel on top of the world so and i i yeah. just i appreciate you so much as a friend and as a brother it's like really doing the work in their life too I'll, like walk into your room the other day um when you gave me a massage and the whole room just energetically felt balanced. It felt, Mm. it felt like I was walking into like almost like a Zen center, you know what I mean? And that like is a, that's always a sign to me of someone that's like really dedicating to their energetic craft. Well, thank you for saying that. It's funny because as you're saying that, I'm looking at the inch of dust that's on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yes, that is totally – oh, <laughs> let's not look at that there. <laughs> but I do appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I didn't think that – oh, I guess I could have predicted this podcast would turn into just a love puddle. <laughs> I just appreciate you, man. Oh, I appreciate you too. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's just what it is. <laughs> well, let's 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 turn the focus to the next 5 years because you said yeah. that you want to um you said you want to eventually turn this into something like a a trauma therapy direction where you really like helping people process things to allow them to be, you know, a clear vessel. What does that look like for you? So, with the trauma work, while it is a major driver in my in my life i would maybe say that that's more of a 10-year thing um i think within the next five years um what i'm looking at is i'm going to be really honing in on my craft and expanding the modalities um really understanding the physiology of that body work offers because it's very intimate and um in my opinion sacred space and there's just so much to learn you know so what i want to do in the next five years is um, create an embodiment coaching kind of situation where I can sit on a one-on-one, have either weekly or monthly meetings, depending on how they want. And I can help people not just through massage, but through self-care techniques, help them fully embody themselves. So I feel like once I do that work enough to where I'm helping people increase their rate of bodily awareness, free up energy, like clear stagnation, not in like a, not to discredit, Um, a lot of other professions but in a very palpable way that that is you can't argue with it once i start getting that skill set down and have that toolkit that's when i'm going to go into trauma therapy but first i really want to understand even just like regular psychology well i don't want to say psychology because i'm not a psychologist and that's out of scope but i want to be able to understand how to help people get into a better state of flow who aren't dealing with trauma so that Mm -hmm. when i get into the trauma work um, then I'll at least know how to go from baseline to deeper levels of embodiment. So it's kind of like a continuum, you know? Um, but that, I mean, that is the overarching goals. I want to be able to help people who are disconnected from their bodies, find 
a sense of wholeness within themselves because I think as a society, that's where we're at. We are a society of trauma. And until we address those, I think it starts at the individual. Yeah. And, yeah. Until I personally understand the individual road from trauma to wholeness, I'm not going to, anything I offer to the collective, at least from my standpoint is going to be botched because I don't know. I don't know the individual path, you know? Right. And I, I think there are a lot of analogs. So for me, it's this entire cosmology of, um, individual in relation to societal and the planet you know for me the end goal of this past trauma is reconnecting with the planet you know it's creating um, open channels for the human vessel to be able to be in harmony you know we are of the planet yet we are acting in ways that is very against the planet so for me i had to find a starting point because there's so many different variables and aspects to dive in on so i'm like well I'm going to dive in with myself, like, you know, the most core experience that I can have, which is my direct experience. And then once I get that going in myself, then at least I can help other people. Once I help other people, then I can help people who like are air quote unhelpable by a lot of other standards of care. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it, it, you can only do that work once you've establish that within yourself once you've figured out modalities or ways to address your own trauma or address your own uh like energetic levels when it flows throughout the day just like how i told you after we like after i figured out the uh the settings on my computer and how to get the audio right i was like you know what like we're we're starting to record the podcast Mm -hmm. and i was like you know what I'm going to take a 10 minute break because I don't think my energy is at a point that it can do this podcast efficiently. And I feel so yeah. much better now and it feels way more like, I don't know. It feels way more free than if I would have just like pushed through and continued. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I th- yeah, I was going to say, and I can see that within you that you do have a greater sense of self-awareness and that you were able to pause and like, yo, my energy is kind of scattered right now. And I was actually really glad that you did that. You know, I'd rather you do that than to um, kind of just like truck along, even though like you weren't able to like feel yourself, you know? And um, yeah, a lot of people don't have that sense of uh, knowing when they're in harmony or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it also, it comes to a point of like, I think people feel like they have obligations to other people or, or other things like, um, like I, I think I think capitalism kind of works into that as well. Like, um, like people will go so hard at their job that they will negate uh, ne- uh, neglect their own health, their own mind, yeah. Yeah. which is their health too. <laughs> and um, basically, like prevent themselves from being happy or prevent themselves from like getting through what they're, what they need to get through before they can actually be a productive worker for that yeah. industry, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that capitalism isn't just an economic system, but it's also a psychology and it's a psychology that puts capital ahead of human welfare. <laughs> um, so yeah, a really I think good that you, way to put it. Yeah, I think you're really hitting the nail on the head. Whereas I think there is a more sustain. I don't think capitalism is inherently evil. I think there are ways. I mean, and this is a big part of my platform is um, like 21st century vitalism. It's like let's take what we have right now and work with that energy in a way that we can go forward rather than like rewrite it. Like let's fix the parts that don't work. And um, yeah, I think a part of that is like understanding that capitalism is an aspect of life it's not all of life and frankly you can't even interact with it in a holistic sustainable way unless you do the self-care to like bolster yourself otherwise you it becomes your god you know yeah and that's just not a healthy spot to be it's not natural yeah it's a tool but it's yeah yeah and i think you're you're right in that disconnection with nature that we have um, and that's part, like, part of why, like, I put, like, for the logo, there's, you got mushrooms on there, you got the earth, you got, like, the sun behind it. It's like, we aren't, 
able to we aren't able to truly do the things that we want to do in life if we aren't connected to the earth and we aren't connected to our food. Um, yeah. And there's there's so much of our society that is just packaged by corporations that like we could just give them our doll hairs and yeah. l- l- just get the thing, but we don't see the uh, you don't we don't see the cost. We don't really see the true cost of doing that in that way. And I've been, I've, I've been loving living with my new roommate, Connor, um, who's, who's a part of my band. Um, why not? And he and I have been cooking, um, a lot recently, like all of the food that we've been making or that we've been eating outside of when we've been cooking is all just like leftovers that's like thrown together and we like mix it up and, and put some different things in there to make it different. But it's been so wholesome to have that connection with my food to where I'm not having to go out and just like buy stuff. And I got into that habit during quarantine. I would just like, you know, like I felt like I like just wanted to go out to like a, um, go out to like Meyer and just like get something or like whatever. Um, and like when things opened up, I was like, uh, at least to some level, I was, I was buying like takeout from, uh, what was it? Like my tie. Like Dude, I, al- I hit that up so much. <laughs> almost every day. Yeah. And it drained my finances and I'm like, damn, like I can't be doing that. And I'm just grateful. Like now that I feel a better connection with the earth, I I went to the farmer's market the other day and that like, it's just so beautiful there. And there's so many, so many farmers and so many people that are just like, so grateful to have that opportunity to, um, to sell their stuff. And, um, I also, at, at this point, I wanted to check in with you cause I know you said that you had a friend that you're looking to link up with. Um, yeah. how's that looking right now? Um, honestly, I could go for a little bit longer. I feel like we're in a pretty good click here and, um, I already communicated to them that, uh, probably go a little bit longer. So yeah. I mean, if you still got time, I still got some time, but, um, if you don't got time, then I don't got time either. Oh, all right. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. What about music? Like there's you have a backlog of music that I witnessed uh the other day when I came over. Um how has that been flowing for you since going into body working? So it's been a very interesting relationship. Me personally with music, um it kind of comes and goes. And for me, I've I've kind of taken a big lesson in just kind of like allowing it to be a hobby. (laughs) I feel like there's kind of a stigma against pursuing an art form as something that isn't going to make you money. Um, I feel like we always tend to like push it to the, the biggest possible outcome that we can. But like for me, music is kind of just an outlet when I have an, a time to express Um, with body work, as soon as that came up, it definitely changed. I I wasn't putting nearly as much time into it, but at the start of quarantine, definitely was doing stuff a little bit every day. But, um, yeah, I, I enjoy my relationship with it where it's at. I'll, uh, I'll get on, make some fart noises and put it to a drum beat. (laughs) Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I do electronic music. Um, and I'm really glad that I have all the skills that I do with it. I am pretty adequate at using, uh, Ableton live, um, so if my future projects, I'm always going to have myself as a sound engineer. So, um, I don't think anything was for naught, but I, I'm, I'm casual with it. Honestly, I think that that's what it's kind of settled in my life. I think in terms of like what I'm finding important and what I'm naturally being drawn to, um, it's interesting cause it, it was a big part of my identity and I really wanted to make something out of it. And I thought that that would be my ticket to, help people because it's helped me you know i mean music has saved my life so many times and i just wanted to give that to other people but i realized that like i actually think i have something else that maybe wouldn't be best channeled while sitting in a studio for eight hours a day every day so it's kind of taken a back seat 
and um it honestly feels really good to like be able to say that oddly enough um because yeah a lot of people you know don't want to you know once they invest so much psychic energy into something it to a lot of people can feel kind of demeaning to be like well i guess i'm just done doing that um not that i'm done but like it, it feels good to kind of like like the tower tarot card just like have that part of my life kind of topple over you know and just kind of change form so now it's like a friend it's like a meditative tool um i'll probably release stuff as time goes on but for now it isn't my main focus really but thanks for asking though i mean you've always been a, a strong supporter every time i show you something you look good so like i appreciate that dude i love it um, i love yeah. your music uh <laughs> as you when you said the tower i like you can't hear it but um i played the there's a there's this thing called no.com <laughs> uh it, yeah. it's uh uh, from Star Wars Episode Three, when uh, Anakin becomes Darth Vader, and he goes no, <laughs> and so I just it, it's it's a button you just click it. Yeah, it says yeah. press in dire situations. So. <laughs> the tower. Yeah, I think it. Oh man, I'm never going to see that card the same now. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. But yeah, yeah, every time every time you've shown me something from your music, it's it's been so good. And so what what is that called again? Cricket. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, that's the, the moniker. And Little you don't, body, love voice. you don't, you don't have a SoundCloud for it, do you? Nope, not right yet. I have the name reserved. <laughs> nice, but yeah, yeah. Well, look out for that, everybody, because honestly, everything that I've heard has been really top notch. Like, there's, a, like, I would almost compare it to Tipper in oh. a lot of ways. I know, I, mean, I know that's, but I know, I, yeah. I know that's, that's weird to hear. Um, yeah. but I, I honestly enjoy it in that same, that same vein. So, uh, thank you for saying that. That means a lot. Yeah. So now we're at the spot where we're like, where do we go from yeah. here? What's where going to happen? Go. That's a really wonderful spot. The liminal nothingness. That yes. Kind of float on, oh, you know? I love it. Yeah, if it wasn't a pure audio based platform, I would say like we could just do an eye gazing meditation. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we can do that right now. <laughs> um yeah, uh I think you're doing a great thing here. I think um from my understanding from the the guests you've had, you know, it seems to be a very uh community oriented affair. And you know, I'm glad that you kind of brought me into the family. I know you're uh you're doing the project bring me to life uh network right mm -hmm. that, yeah so i think uh i'm just gonna rep them it's not the choice that i'm going with with my um podcast outlet but i see the work that they're doing and i think it's incredible and i think for all of you out there listening give it a listen i think they got some cool things going absolutely yeah, yeah it's been it's been a really it's been a big joy to be able to to work with them and to um, feel into like how to get started and ask questions. Um, yeah. and I really think that it's going to take off and, uh, be a really good, like there's a, there's a segment called afternoon with the dudes. Um, the dudes. and it's Ashton, me, uh, uh, CeeLo, and, uh, there's like four other people that I've like just met and they're so amazing. Like they're so uh, they have such a knowledge of masculine and feminine energies mm -hmm. and like how, like how the masculine has, you know, has like how, uh, toxic masculinity has kind of just, uh, you know, t t I don't even know what to say. Like it has just been a constant in yeah. Western culture, um, that like has caused both like, like all genders to suffer really. Yeah. And, um, we are going to do another podcast, I think on the, the first, but we did one about a month ago. That was absolutely amazing. And it was so cool mm. to be a part of. Um, so it's so, essentially yeah. a virtual, uh, men's circle. Type yeah. Of deal? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I know some of the people who are involved in that project, so I, I yeah, that'd be a lot of fun to listen in on. And, um, yeah, definitely uh, with my own endeavors, see myself as a 
uh, I guess, spiritual partner to that. Um, hopefully they'll accept me in a um, distanced way. <laughs> um, yeah, I personally, uh, with with where I was coming at it, and it's weird because like I'm friends with everybody on the network, but a big part of like me going into this world myself was like kind of just like rugged isolation. Not not really that. I don't know if that's accurate, but like I want I wanted the opportunity to like do the marketing and like learn the infrastructure and learn how to host and like how to and I mean yeah getting help is an amazing thing and I think serves different aims and stuff but um yeah I just uh I kind of wanted to just like trailblaze in my own way and then maybe I could even like feed into that stream and you know still support each other and I think if we can I mean, so many people are starting podcasts right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally know, like, five people um, in the past, like, month that are like, I'm doing it. Yeah. And um, hell yeah. That's, like, what I got to say. I feel, honestly, I think everybody should have a podcast. <laughs> um, only for the sake of, like, that's when you put yourself, the pedal to the metal on yourself, you know? Like, how well do you really know yourself unless you are yeah. in a, you know, this allows us to articulate and communicate and absorb each other's knowledge you know it forces this container where we're like really with each other yeah i'm not on my phone i don't think you're on yours you know (laughs) yeah i mean it's it's one of those things i'm about to record with uh gordy nice um, pretty soon but it was one of those things where like i get it like i like basically the reason i started doing this was because i I needed to expose myself. Like I needed to get myself in that flow and be comfortable just, just flowing, just, you know, continuously like for a long period of time. That's, that's when the best conversations come through is when you just like, you're just in it for so long that you're like, okay, you settle in and then the real stuff starts rising to the surface. And yeah, that content I think can be really powerful for people to hear and it may not be conversations that they hear in their, in their immediate circles, you know, maybe they're, they're with uh, a partner that, you know, doesn't ask them questions that are very deep, or maybe it's uh, a friend that you've been hanging out with that, like just, just drinks booze all day and, and doesn't know any differently and doesn't know how to like address their own, like, mental model or like how their perception their perceptual apparatus like they you know whatever it's yeah i think that's that's part of what can be really helpful um about these podcasts and i'm really appreciative of you jumping on this and um helping me out yeah i mean whatever i can do from my limited capacity from where i'm at you know I think what's really cool is the expanded network that we're about to start seeing as everybody. We all have different inspirations and different people that um, we want to um, shine a limelight on, you know? So as we're all doing this all together, we're all having kind of a a shared conversation because now you and me are interacting. I'm sure me and Ash, someone else will be interacting. Other people who are doing things, you know, like now we have this just expanded network and um i think we could really like expand the conversation and uh you know i I think that that's a good thing especially for now and especially in the very tense social fabric that we find ourselves in i think the more we meet in this shared flow state uh you know that's it goes back to the wellness practice that i'm trying to push that's where love comes in that's where love comes in man between people it's not they give you love. It's you. You meet in that space together. Yeah, this is a form of love. You know. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, in in light of what you said about you know the cha- chaoticness of the world or whatnot, um, if you had one thing to share with the world, what would it be? Start breathing with your belly. <laughs> um, there's this thing called diaphragmatic breathing which is really simple and it allows you a direct doorway into your nervous system Um, so your diaphragm is a muscle that is underneath your lungs and it's actually the prime muscle in respiration so 
when you breathe with your belly as opposed to your chest, you're actually increasing the thoracic cavity, the one where your lungs are in. You're allowing more air in, and you're actually driving the air down deeper into your belly. So you're actually able to get more oxygen into more space in your body, and it actually uh, affects your parasympathetic nervous system, which is relaxation. So you can just take a very deep breath. I'll do one right now. Expand your belly rather than breathing into your chest. Let's begin. I'm only going to do the one. You get the point. Um, I think once we start breathing with our bellies, we're able to, it's a statement. It's, I know how I want to feel, and I'm going to take the action to feel that way. Uh, You become less reactive. You're able to have better conversations. You're able to be more present. And um, that's what the world needs is more presence, more compassion. Well, Brett Kane, you are a present to me. You're Um, a present to me. And through this podcast, I have opened you up and you have opened me up. And we are enjoying each other's presence. Uh... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You're one of those presents I would, like, sneak into my mom's room into her closet and, like, look, like, a couple weeks early. Like, oh, Oh, she got me a Tony Garen. Limited edition. Yeah. Oh, God, we got to get him fed, though. What's he doing in the closet? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Brett Kane, you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you for the opportunity, man. I really appreciate it. Likewise, my dude. We are on it. We are off to the races. Everybody, I wish you a lovely day. Uh, Get after it. Let's change the world for the better. Right on. Bye, guys. You end the recording. No, we're still going, but we're listening to the music oh, now. Here we are. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's all good. It's <laughs> all good. Go. Here we go. Here we go.